Hi, this is Roger. <coughs> oh, excuse me, croak, <laughs> croaky throat. Um, thanks for dropping by. I'll get there in a minute. Um, just a few new blooms and some that um, are either going to go quickly or don't last long. And if I don't catch them, um, they might not make the magic everything in bloom on the eighth. Um, but we do have some new blooms opened um, recently. Um, I don't, and also I was going to include some things that are there that just don't ever get filmed. Um, this little Phalaenopsis down here is incredibly attractive, little mounted plant, um, nice little mini. Um, looks like the spike's going to extend, and the old spike's got a branch on it and, a, and it looks like an extension, so maybe that one will catch up with this one. And I wanted to say something about this. This is my um, Sidera japonica and there's lots of people going to hate me for this but that's going on the list of plants to go um, it really does nothing for me I'm afraid um, I know it's my only Phalaenopsis species but that just doesn't do it for me the fragrance on it is there but I don't find it in any way strong um, I mean it's not a bad plant it did drop a leaf a while ago but it's got a new one coming um, yeah, so I think that, that one's going to go down the line, not now. Um, but I'd, I'd keep this one, um, you know, this, this one I do like. The colours are relatively unusual. I mean, the, the, the yellow, creamy yellow background is, is a nice colour. It does fade a bit after it opens. Um, beautiful magenta and sort of purple and a gorgeous shaped lip. Again, with nice colouring on it. So, you know, you can stay. But that um, japonica does nothing for me, I'm afraid. And um, <coughs> this is what I call my dinosaur um, phalaenopsis. This has just opened a bloom. This plant is in hell of a state. Um, it's got itself in a right muddle, quite honestly. Um, it has a natural trait of growing new plants around the base. Um, call them keikis if you like. But um, this plant has that habit. It does it all the time. Um, when I bought it, it was effectively a plant with another plant attached to it, which got separated. Somebody else had one of them and I kept one. But um, the growth it grew, what happened was the um, two new leaves in the center of the crown rotted and I thought I'd lost the plant. Well, then it pushed out a little plant out the side and I thought, well, at least I can grow that on. And then it grew a plant straight out of the crown where the leaves had rotted off. But neither of them have grown properly. Th these are very distorted, minute little plants, and I don't think they're going to grow anymore. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen to the plant on this, but the bloom is gorgeous. Beautiful patterning. Um, lovely patterning on the lip. Lovely deep yellow as part of it. And a good sort of, um, a good yellow, more like a buttercup yellow background, and then just an array of red spots. So uh, you can stay, but I don't know what the plant's going to do. It's in a mess. Uh, <laughs> so all I'm going to do is just what I normally do, is just feed and water it as I go along and see what happens. Um, but relatively slow growing, this one. So <laughs> seeing what happens could take a while. Um, and uh, this one's just come into bloom. Um, now I've had this plant a long time. It's a black hair type. Um, I actually got this from a friend that he grew from seed, um, so it's one of his hybrids effectively. It's a um, Dendrobium infundibulum crossed with um, Lowii, and um, very pure, pristine white. You'd have a job to get a whiter white, um, and a lovely gold colour in the lip with some veining. So it's a very attractive thing. I got. Um, I think there's four blooms coming at the moment. Yeah, another two buds, and this one's just opening behind this one. Um, and this hasn't bloomed for a while, so I've forgotten how long they last. <laughs> I don't know whether these are better at lasting than some of the dendrobiums I've got lying around, I must admit. Um, yeah, so that's good. And um, it's a, a little bit of a mistake on my part, but my dendrobium fleckery up here... I haven't got my white paint on this clear glass yet and I've only just really noticed that the sun is coming round here now so it's pulled those blooms towards the light so I can't even see them. <laughs> so 
<laughs> all I can do is hang this somewhere else, but I'm going to try and sort of prop it up down here, back to front, so that we can have a, at least have a look. This is the first time this has ever produced more than one bloom on a spike for me. Um, Australian one, this one. And um, it's, these blooms are very attractive. They do come into the don't last too long category, as, as there are a lot of dendrobiums in that category. But if that's how they are, that's what you live with, you know. And yet some of them last ages. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the first time I've had more than one bloom ever on this plant. I've normally had one bloom per year. So we have an improvement. It bloomed a while ago with a single bloom. Um, and now it's got this one open single bloom on a spike again and one of two coming here so that's four blooms this year instead of one so I'd say that's improving um, but lovely delicate little blooms it's a pity I can't get in really close with this camera but uh, yeah so that's an improvement and the other thing that's uh, coming on is the um, dendrobium hercoglossum now in this poor light that's not going to look brilliant but um, all I wanted to do was show the sheer number of blooms on this and there's stacks more to come. It's nowhere near finished opening all the blooms yet. Um, but, you know, massive clusters on many canes. Um, it's doing really well. And, and then, oh, blooms up here, even tangled up with, uh, with the one next to it, which is uh, Findlayanum. But they're gorgeous blooms, Herco Blossom. They're small and delicate. We don't all have to be shouting loud with bright yellow bits. <laughs> yeah. So that one's coming on well. And um, the good news is that my, if I can bend it over so as we can see it a bit, my Cycopsis bloom has opened properly. Because uh, um, in the past, when this plant was going downhill, I had a few distorted blooms, followed by the top of the spike completely drying off. Um, I thought I'd lost the spike, but it branched out, and that branch turned out to be a bud. And it's opened properly. That's what it should look like, with the three antennae um, slightly widening towards the tip. Um, yeah, looking good. Looks like a clown. You can see like a head, and the sort of um, skirty type baggy trousers and uh, baggy arms on the suit that some of the clowns wear. Beautiful bloom. So that's a success. <laughs> uh, the chrysotoxum's on its way out now. Um, they'll soon all be gone, and then we'll be looking for new growths and get some more going for next year. Um, I, it happens. You're going to have to put up with things like this. But after a good show, Nesta is just starting to go over. And I suspect that will be followed by the aphyllum round the corner, quite honestly. Uh, no signs of it going, oh yeah, yeah there's a few uh, few petals starting to get limp. So, um, you know, we, we're going to get some more days out of this, but we won't get weeks, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so that's it as far as the new stuff is concerned. There are some more buds coming. We've got some good news down here. One of my Deezers has a spike. So that's good. And that's on the youngest plants. Some of the larger plants over there will, yeah, there's another one coming here. So uh, we will have some Deesa blooms down the line. This was that strange spike that pushed up in sort of October time <laughs> and was in blooming towards the winter. Very strange thing to do for a Deesa. So we'll have those to come down the line. Um, we've got the, uh, the yellow Miltoniopsis spike is pushing on nicely. And one of the other... Uh, one of the others down here has got a spike as well, the Her Alexander. And the spikes on the Dracula Bella, uh, uh, they're still with it, even though that got uh, messed about and put in a new pot. And it looks like there's a third one coming. So we've got two of those. Hopefully they won't blast this time because it's got the moisture it needs now, having put it in a bigger pot with a lot more moss. Um, so that, that, that should do okay. Um, and the other thing that's lurking in the background that's going to come soon is my little um, Harvey Annum kikis. <laughs> not, not adult plant. It looks like the spike on that's going to open. It's blasted one bud. It shouldn't even really be blooming. These are tiny little kikis. These were only taken off the plant and potted last spring. So they've only been in the pot a year. 
But anyway, we should see that one again soon. Some frilly nonsense. Blooms on that are very attractive. <coughs> and would you believe it? <coughs> that was the plant we had with the nice um, cascade of white blooms with the yellow center, the um, farmer I cross with Griffithianum. And I took the spike off of that a while ago and there were no signs of any blooms on this. So I thought, right, now I can get on and repot that. Well, that's appeared in the last couple of days. <laughs> There's no way that was there last time that plant was watered. And they do grow at a phenomenal rate. Um, incredible you know you could all you could almost sit there and watch them grow they grow so fast um, so we'll have another one of those to see soon and um, I'll put off repotting but I'm get gonna get at its um, sister plant in here and repot that one um, they are in fact the same plant just across the other way round. so um, and that one is overdue repotting um, but the media is not not bad or anything it just needs refreshing and it needs doing before the new growths and new roots start so I'll have to get on with it soon and another thing you probably won't like but in the list of plants to go these are going I'm fed up with them that basket came unhooked and fell again the other day now that actually fell on one of my new Miltoniopsis not long after I got them and I cursed it then not on film luckily and it did it again yesterday and it just missed a small delicate plant that it would have completely crushed it's a heavy basket with all that lava rock and these just don't do well for me I mean okay one of them's got a new leaf coming but there's not a sign of a new root in there nothing and they're not not to me they're just not nice looking plants so both of those are gonna go they can't go in that basket and they certainly can't go with the lava rock <laughs> it would cost a fortune to post them like that. They'll have to go bare-rooted. But, you know, they can be wrapped up in some moss or something to keep them moist on their journey. Um, but those two are going to go. As I say, I've, I'm constantly looking at things that either don't do well for me or I've just gone off them for one reason or another. And sometimes it's just that they won't bloom. Um, and, and that happens. That Wilbur Chang thing down here just will not bloom. Now I spent some time this morning looking up the parents of this and then individually looking up their um, where they grow and everything about them to find out if I could pinpoint something that was wrong with this because although it grows well and you know I mean it's got another four new growths coming out from the last that it grew but still hasn't bloomed. Um, but one of the parents um, blooms nearer the start of the year and the other parent blooms towards the end of the year. Um, combining those two could get some form of random blooming but it's more likely to bloom with whichever is the dominant species in that hybrid. It's two species in there so it's a primary cross. Um, if I do ever get it to bloom it's a sequential bloomer so you know this, the, it like the Psychopsis, it will bloom and then another bud will push out over the top and replace the one that drops off and it can do that over a period of a couple of years even but that's no good to me if it won't bloom it's as simple as that both of the parents are warm growers so the only thing I can think of that's stalling this plant is it's too cold in the winter but that's not its blooming period and it, there's nothing wrong with the plant. The plant grows really well. So the cold can't be affecting it that much. And as it's both of the parents' blooming season is sort of, um, you know, late spring into autumn, being cold in the winter shouldn't really make too much difference to it. And if it was unhappy, it wouldn't keep growing as well. It's just the blooming of it. And it's certainly plenty big enough to bloom. It's a massive plant. But we're working on it. <coughs> but again, you know, it, it's had quite a long time without blooming. There is a limit to my patience, <laughs> especially when I can't see what the problem is over a long period of time. So uh, we'll see how we get on with that. Um, and um, like I said, with these two, um, <coughs> they're both the same. They're both effectively the same plant. One of them's got a name and was a gift. The other one hasn't and wasn't. And they're virtually identical. So one of them may go. 
Um, again, two plants almost identical in appearance, growth habits and blooming. Is there any reason for two? Now that takes up quite a bit of space. That would be the one to go. I've had it a long time. It's done well for me. I've been pleased with it. But, um, you know, maybe somebody else can have a go. Uh, any cat leaves? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's still not open. I was hoping that was going to be open today. Um, under there, you can see the bud. Um, that's the Pradit spots. Um, that's going to be open in the next couple of days. And I must admit, I wasn't expecting the bloom to be that big. It's huge. Um, those petals and sepals, which are in fact the bud, are probably nearly two inches long. Well, you know, you spread that out, that bloom's going to be nearly four inches across. And I wasn't expecting that. So uh, we'll see how we go anyway. And um, catlias are all coming on, new growths pushing out. I don't think I've got any more buds at the moment, although. Uh, this one up here, this sheath, this will bloom. The previous growth bloomed and it wasn't even as large as or as long as that. And um, that's the base of it, got new roots coming out. So um, that should bloom, no reason why it shouldn't. And there are others that are pushing on, but um, you know, they're not there yet. So I think we're gonna be short on the Catlia blooms for some time. Although this little orange one down here is still hanging in there. <laughs> That's been in bloom ages, but not all on the same spike. It's had a succession of spikes, so, so that one's done well. And, um, yeah, so just to sort of look round some of the blooms, really. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.